What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sonoma Tech once again. Today, we're going to be going over yet another mining video for you. We're going to be talking about how to get you up and running on your very first starter mining rig. Today, we're going to be covering how to build one out of a milk crate that you can pick up from your local grocer or farmer's market and get up and running mining Ethereum as quickly as possible. So without further ado, let's get into the parts list. Uh, the feed the bears. Things you're gonna need is a milk crate, of course. I had one laying around. Most people may have one laying around, or you can go drive around and try to find one, maybe buy some products with it, or check your local Craigslist for anybody giving any away. The next thing you're gonna need, the most important part, is going to be some video cards. We're gonna recommend RX 5700s. If you can't find any of those, some replacements are gonna be 5700 XTs, or if you wanna spend a little bit less money, you can get the 50 set, 5600 XTs. XTs, excuse me, and all the way down to the 5500 XTs, which are mining pretty well as well. So after that, we're going to be taking a look at a motherboard. We are going to need to go all the way to the H110 BTC from ASRock. We can settle on the H81 because we're only using four GPUs. And so in the description, you'll find a link to all these parts in this particular motherboard is the ASRock H81 Pro BTC Revision 2.0. The processor is going to be just a basic i3-4160, and you're going to want 8 gigabytes of DDR4. Previously, you can still as well get away with the 4 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, with some modifications to HiveOS, but that's a more detailed video that I don't care to go into. Just go ahead and get 8 gigabytes. It's going to make life easier, and you'll be happier. You'll also need a 16 gig stick uh, memory stick, USB. 3.0 preferred, so your read and write times are fast enough because otherwise you're going to be sitting there forever. And you're going to need four PCIe risers. They usually come in packs of six. Sometimes you can buy them individually as well. Just go ahead and check the link down below to see what's available on Amazon. Finally, you're going to want a power supply 1300 watts or more. There is a very nice one that allows for expandability on Amazon that's a BTC power supply. It's a, kind of one of those Chinese knockoff ones that reads Bitcoin mining power supply on the side. It will go up to eight GPUs. There's another model that only goes up to six. For this particular build, the one that goes up to six will be just fine. Or you can pick up a Seagate or Seasonic, excuse me, 1300 watt power supply, which I've used in a lot of rigs, which will power up to seven GPUs, depending, of course, on how much power you're pulling. Let's now get into the steps to go ahead and build this beast. First of all, you're going to need to install the CPU into the motherboard, making sure that you align the two divots and the arrow into the slot and then collapse the bar over it and it'll go into place. Once you've completed that, you're going to need to install the CPU cooler on top of that. The Intel CPU coolers are super easy to install as they are little plastic push pins and you will push them in a cross pattern uh, across all four and make sure that it is secured in tightly and then connect the CPU fan to the motherboard. There should be a CPU fan uh, header and you'll just need to find that label and plug it on in. Next, you'll want to install the RAM into the motherboard. You want to make sure that you're in the slot B1 and then push the two locking mechanisms back and then place that memory into the slot, aligning the notch on the memory with the notch on the RAM slot and then push firmly on both sides until it clicks in. Now that we've done that, we're going to boot into the BIOS and change some things. You'll be able to boot into the BIOS through the integrated graphics processor on the CPU itself. And this motherboard has an HDMI out as well as a DVI out. So whatever monitor you have running at the time, that's going to go ahead and facilitate the video out before we go ahead and plug it up to everything else. Now, without failing to mention, of course, that we will need to hook up the power supply to this. Don't worry, you can still leave the motherboard on top of the motherboard box and then take the 24 pin and plug it into the 24 pin 
uh, plug on the motherboard and the eight pin CPU power and plug that into the motherboard and then you will be able to boot into the BIOS. In the BIOS, we're gonna be changing a couple things. We're going to want to change the AC power on after power loss so that if the rig goes offline or it loses power and then the power is restored and you're on vacation or something like that, the mining rig will automatically boot back up. We're gonna to wanna to change the PCIe setting for above 4G decoding. This should be on by default on any mining motherboard. However, if you're working with something else like an ASUS PZ270, which is a very popular one from the past, if you bought a used one, you will have to modify this setting on this particular motherboard. It'll already be set by default. And then finally, the little interesting one for this particular build, we're only doing four GPUs. And because of that, we don't need both of the Molexes plugged in. And you can't plug in one of the Molexes because of the design of the motherboard. It puts the Molex facing basically where it'll be hitting into the milk crate. This isn't going to be a problem since if we're on the milk crate, we're only gonna be able to fit four GPUs and we won't need more than one extra supplemental Molex power adapter. There's a couple ways you can go about this, but it's gonna come after you install the motherboard into the crate and then install all the GPUs. Once you've installed all the GPUs and the motherboard into the crate and you boot up, it will give you an error. When you see this error, there is an option to hit N to not uh, see the error again. So it'll just reboot and skip that little notification that you don't have both Molexes plugged in. Keeping in mind that when you move up to six GPUs, in a lot of cases, depending on the power consumption of those GPUs through the PCIe rail, you will need to add that additional supplemental power and hopefully will be on a larger case because you have the six GPUs and easily be able to plug this in. For this particular build, like I stated, it won't be needed. All right, so now we're on to installing the motherboard into the crate. The kind of orientation that you want to place the motherboard into the crate is going to be with your input output facing towards like they're going up towards the outside of the case on the side of the crate. This way you can access your USB ports, your, of course, outputs, your HDMI outputs, etc., cetera, and, you, and all of that. So that's going to be the orientation. The next step is going to be installing the power supply into the bottom of the case using some zip ties to go ahead and secure it down to the milk crate. Once you've done this, make sure that you take all of the cables and pretty much everything except for the cables that you're going to plug into the motherboard uh, and route them outside of the case so that they are there when you're ready to start plugging up the graphics cards. Take the single mo one Molex four pin and plug it into the four pin Molex at the top of the PCIe slots on the motherboard. Once again, plug in the 24 pin power for the CPU into the motherboard and then plug in the eight pin power for the CPU into the motherboard as well. Once you've done that, we're ready to move on installing the brace for the um, graphics cards. And so you're gonna use zip ties patent pending here for the rear brace. It'll be somewhere around where the handles on the crate are, depending on the type of crate you have. If you have to drill some holes, it's gonna take a little bit of redneck ingenuity and you're gonna have to go ahead and solve that yourself, just depending on the milk crate that you have. In my particular case, the handles sit perfect for where we want to uh, have the GPUs resting on the back. And so you're just gonna daisy chain some, some zip ties together and tighten them up about as tight as you can get. The larger the zip ties, the better, but the larger the zip ties, the more expensive. Standard size zip ties should be sufficient here. You're gonna clip off the excess of the zip ties so they aren't interfering with the GPUs themselves. And then we are going to move on to installing the GPUs. To install the GPU, the first thing you're gonna do is plug the USB into the riser, and then you're gonna plug the six pin portion for the PCIe power into the riser. And then you're going to plug the PCIe connector into the PCIe slot on the motherboard, and of course, plug the USB 
into that PCIe connector. You are then going to plug the GPU into the PCIe riser and screw the GPU into the crate and rest the back onto the patent pending zip tie brace. Obviously a joke on patent pending. Now that you have your rig up and running, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and boot into, of course, the BIOS again, and just confirm that you're going to be skipping that little screen that we talked about earlier. You can rewind the video if you need to do that, because this is where you would do that. And then we can create the HiveOS bootable drive. We're gonna be using HiveOS because HiveOS is going to allow for a lot of versatility as well as allow for you to go ahead and use four gigabyte GPU still on the network. And in the case of Ravencoin, it's gonna allow you to use three gigabyte 1060s still. And moving into Windows is gonna require more resources and more memory on the GPUs than it would on Hive OS because it's Linux based. And there's less configuration to do because it's already out of the box. So to do this, you're gonna to go to hiveos.farm and you're going to download the image from the downloads tab. And then you're gonna download Etcher. You're gonna use Etcher after you install it by clicking the executable and you are going to take the image that you downloaded, the HiveOS image, select that image, then you're gonna select the USB drive after you've plugged it in, of course, to your computer, and then you are going to click Flash. That will write the HiveOS image to the USB drive, <clears throat> and once this is complete, you're going to need to edit the rig.conf file. So, once you have completed flashing the image, you are going to open the USB drive and browse to the rig conf template and open it up. In the template, you're going to change two things. One will be your farm hash and the other will be the worker name. Now to find your farm hash, you're going to log into your Hive OS account and you're going to go to the farm and then you're going to click over to your account and settings tabs, scroll down and find the farm hash, click copy to clipboard, and then paste it into the notepad, making sure that you put quotations around your farm hash. You will do the same thing in the worker, except you can name this whatever you want. For example, we did SOAT rig, I believe like 05 in this particular case, and make sure that is in quotations. If you've done all this correctly, you will not have to use a monitoring keyboard on your mining rig to set anything. You won't have to type in rig ID, you won't have to log in, and you can kind of just plug in the USB drive and nothing else and power it up. This is useful if you're installing in the farms and so on and so forth. However, if you do mess up the rig.conf file, you will need to go ahead and maybe modify these things. Once you've edited those two forms or two pieces on the example, you're gonna click file and save as. You're going to save as rig.conf if you do not have the ability to see in Windows, of course, your uh, options for the file extensions. You'll need to go into File Explorer Options, click the Advanced tab, and uncheck the box for Hide File Extensions. And then you will be able to go in and just rename the text file to rig.conf, and then it will actually be a configuration file that HiveOS can read. So those are all the caveats. That's the most difficult thing that you're going to have to do. So then you can take the USB drive and plug it into your mining rig and turn it on. Now you're up and running, but you aren't quite out of the woods yet. You now should have the rig showing up in Hive OS, but it'll say missing flight sheet. So at this point, you're gonna to need to create a flight sheet, obviously, but before you can create a flight sheet, you will need to create a wallet. So we've gone over in how to mines before, MetaMask and so on and so forth, Today we're gonna to be focusing on Ethereum. If you already have MetaMask, we're gonna go into HiveOS, you're gonna go into your farm, and then you're gonna click Wallets. 
Under wallets, you're gonna add a new wallet. You're gonna select Ethereum as the coin. You're going to copy the address from your MetaMask and paste that into the wallet address portion for that wallet. And then you can name it whatever and click save. At that point, you'll have a wallet to target the flight sheet with and you will go into flight sheets. Once you're in flight sheets, this is where you'll configure the miner. Once again, you will select the coin as Ethereum and then you're gonna select the wallet as the wallet that you just created. Then you are going to select the mining pool that you want to mine on. The most profitable currently is Ethermine so I would recommend using Ethermine and then selecting the two US servers. However, you can also use the Hivon pool, which will avoid fees for up to four mining rigs. Otherwise, you will be paying past one mining rig, you will be paying $3 per month per rig. It is made up in the amount of extra money you would make on ethermine.org right now, but that may change in the future, so just keep it in mind. I apologize, we have some alerts going off for the mining rigs and hopefully that will stop here in a second but I'm definitely gonna have to go check that out because uh, we have temp alerts and everything set up on our phone through telegram if you guys are interested in a uh, hive os alert bot how to let me know down in the comment section below once you've created the flight sheet it's as simple as going back to your mining rig in the farms highlighting it and then going up to the top uh, bar toolbar and hitting flight sheets and then selecting the new flight sheet and clicking apply in most cases the miner will start running in some cases depending on your hardware configuration you will need to reboot the mining rig afterwards you can do that by clicking the power button in the same toolbar and say reboot mining rig at this point you should be up and running mining ethereum with your new mining rig we'll be following this video up with overclocking settings and so on and so forth for the rx 5700s and we already have a video up on what that mining performance should be if you have temperature issues also be sure to check out my guide on how to replace thermal pads and thermal paste on your gpus and i hope this video is helpful if it was leave a like comment down below and take a picture of your mining rig and send it to me at son of a tech on Twitter. I'll see you next Tuesday.